Since 1900, there have been 327 individual seasons in which a batter has been hit by a pitch at least 15 times. You'll probably notice some familiar names among them. There's Anthony Rizzo, whose 182 career hit by pitches has led all of Major League Baseball over the last 12 years. Chase Outley, who may or may not have deserved a few of his many bruises, depending on your opinion of him. Or Craig Biggio, who set the modern day record for career plunkings and sits only two behind dead ball era slugger Huey Jennings for the all time mark. But despite these players' talent for taking a beaning, none of them hold a candle to Ron Hunt, the man who's been called the Babe Ruth of hit by pitches. But first, why not leave a like on this video and subscribe to Stark Raving Sports? It's free and easy, like me on a Saturday night. Only about a quarter of you guys watching are subscribed, so if you are, you're awesome, and if you aren't, you should. It helps us a lot, and you're watching the videos anyway, and it's also free, did I mention that? In 1964, Bob Gibson was 28 years old, six seasons into what would eventually become one of the most legendary pitching careers anyone has ever seen. In addition to the 1100 innings and 71 wins he had already racked up by this point, Gibson was also in possession of the league's most terrifying fastball, a blazing, physics-defying pitch responsible for making him only the second pitcher ever to strike out 3,000 batters in their career. It was also responsible for more than its fair share of injuries, like when it sent rookie Jim Ray Hart to the hospital in 1963 with a broken left shoulder, after the San Francisco infielder had dug in just a little too hard at the plate against Gibson. That's what I'm talking about when you stand him up a little bit, that means instead of letting him lean like that, you pitch in here and it stands him up. And if he leans too far, it usually hits him. He hits himself. <laughs> so when Ron Hunt, who in 1964 had a grand total of one year of MLB service time under his belt, stepped into the box against the hurler, he had no reason to doubt the familiar warning coming out of the St. Louis dugout. Gibson's gonna drill you. Sure enough, Hunt quickly found himself on the receiving end of a 100 mile per hour four-seamer. It wasn't his first time being hit by a pitch, and it sure wasn't Gibson's first time hitting someone. But in that moment, Ron Hunt did something few people, if any, had ever done. He picked the ball up from where it had come to rest by his feet, turned toward Gibson, and flipped it back to him. It was a slight that stunned everyone watching, a 23-year-old on one of the worst teams in history apparently showing up a titan of the game. It certainly caught the attention of Gibson, who would go on to hit Hunt five more times over the next decade, more than any other pitcher. As Hunt took his base, Cardinals first baseman Bill White asked him if he was alright. Yeah, I'm alright, the 186 pound Hunt responded. Now tell that f***er to go warm up. For Ron, this beaning was just hit by pitch number one in a season that would see him take a total of 11 free bases over the next 94 games. Because Ron Hunt, for all he excelled at, was not a power hitter. Across the 12 years he played in the major leagues, he hit a total of 39 home runs, 10 of which came during his rookie season with the Mets in 1963. For context, Marcus Semyon, who led all second basemen in dingers last year, knocked 45 home runs and still only finished fourth in the league. 10 was also a career high for Hunt, who would never break double digits in the homer column again. So, Ron quickly figured out, if he was going to keep his spot as the Mets' starting second baseman, he'd have to find another way to contribute at the plate. Now, he was by no means a slouch with the bat. His average regularly sat in the high 200s by season's end. Keep in mind, though, that this was before advanced stats like WOBA or on-base percentage had made their way to the mainstream, so a 272 average, like the one Hunt put up in his rookie year, was pretty good, but not quite enough at a time when players like Roberto Clemente and Henry Aaron were regularly pushing the mid-300s. And yeah, it would be absurd to expect anyone to live up to the standards set by those two, but there was at least one thing they had in common with Ron. A fearless, win-at-all-costs approach to the game, one which earned them respect from both fans and fellow players alike. Because Ron Hunt didn't just happen to get hit by a lot of pitches. He was really, really good at it. It started with the uniform. Prior to the game, he would make sure that the jersey he wore was nice and loose-fitting to give himself the maximum chance of catching any stray balls that happened to come too close for comfort. Then he'd choke up on the bat and stand as close to the plate as possible. The benefits from this were twofold. First, it allowed him to take back the outside half of the plate, forcing opposing pitchers to have to either be perfect or pitch him inside. If they did the former, Ron would slap it to the opposite field for a base hit. If they chose the latter, however, they risked falling into the second prong of Ron Hunt's hitting approach, his outright refusal to follow the rules of baseball. Rule 608B in Major League Baseball's official handbook stipulates that the batter must make an attempt to avoid being touched by the ball to be awarded first base after being hit by a pitch. 
Hunt, on the other hand, would not only stay in the path of an oncoming pitch, he would often lean into them, turning his body in such a way as to deflect the ball off his back while making it seem like he was still trying to avoid the hit. And while the umpires were well aware of this, let's call it, controversial strategy, they were also well aware of Ron's infamously nasty temper. Nowhere was this more apparent than on August 17, 1971, when Hunt's Montreal Expos visited the Padres for their eighth matchup that year. For an August game in San Diego, temperatures this evening were running surprisingly cool. Of course, for a pair of ball clubs who were 22 and 32 games under 500 respectively, it didn't take much for tensions to begin rising. In the top of the third, Padres starter Steve Arlen led off his second encounter with Hunt by nailing him in the ribs with a fastball. Hunt, keeping with tradition, picked up the ball, tossed it back to the righty, and made his way down to first. Two innings later, with no outs and a runner on, Arlen again tried to go inside with the fastball, once again hitting Hunt in the process, this time on the arm. As Hunt moved towards the ball in order to kindly reunite it with Arlen, Padres catcher Bob Barton ran over to grab it first. In response, Hunt took Barton by the mask, gently ripped it off with both hands, and punched him in the jaw. One fight, two empty benches, and more than a couple of bruises later, Hunt would end up being the only person ejected. He returned to the lineup the next day, and was promptly drilled by Padre starter Fred Norman. But I've got something to admit. This whole time I've been telling you about Ron Hunt, I've been skirting around the thing that makes him so unique, the thing that actually made me want to make this video about him in the first place. I'm talking about... Entering 1971, the modern-day record for hit-by-pitches in a season belonged to Steve Evans of the 1910 St. Louis Cardinals, who was drilled a total of 31 times. Over the 151 games he played that year, he had a rate of about one hit-by-pitch every five games. In the years since, many players had taken a pass at this record, but none had been able to reach 31. Some had come close, like Ron Hunt in 1970, or Ron Hunt in 1969, or Ron Hunt in 1968, but not even the reigning hit-by-pitch leader himself had been able to beat the mark set six decades earlier. That is, until 1971, when it took Ron all of 99 games. It was his first season in Montreal, after an off-season trade had ended his three-year tenure with the San Francisco Giants, a period during which he had led Major League Baseball in hit-by-pitches in back-to-back-to-back -back -back years. But whether it was his short temper, leaving a lineup where he had kind of been protected by teammates Willie Mays and Willie McCovey, or just sheer reckless abandon, at no point in his career was Ron Hunt's willingness to take a beating more on display than in 1971. He actually started the season off slow, with only seven through his first 33 games. But as the summer came around, things really started to pick up. He reached base four times on May 26th via a slap single, a walk, and two hit-by-pitches against the Braves. He added another two on June 6th against the Padres, in the midst of a nine-hit shutout by lefty Dave Roberts. On June 25th, he took a Nolan Ryan fastball to the ribs, and followed it up with two more drillings in Game 2 of the doubleheader that night. At a blistering pace of one beating every three games, Ron's hit-by-pitch rate of 7.8% had completely shattered the previous live ball record of 5.8, set by himself a year earlier. By August 7th, with nearly a third of the season remaining, Ron Hunt had been hit by 31 pitches, having tied Evans' record the week before against Houston. He was leading off that day, and no sooner had Ron set foot into the batter's box than Red starter Jim McLaughlin nailed him with a fastball, marking 32 beanies on the season and one broken record. He didn't stop there, though, continuing to rack up hit-by-pitches until he had tied himself with Hall of Famer Huey Jennings for the all-time mark with only two games left in the season. Now, Huey Jennings played on the Baltimore Orioles in the 1890s, at a time when the baseball looked like this, and pitchers threw about as hard as your average high school senior does today. Oh yeah, and his manager Ned Hanlon, who would also be elected to the Hall of Fame, had adopted a strategy on offense that basically boiled down to letting opposing pitchers hit them on purpose. In 1896, the year when Jennings set his record, the Orioles were hit by a total of 120 pitches, good for nearly a fifth of all hit by pitches across the 12 major league teams. They also won 90 games while losing only 39, so while we can't say for sure that this technique worked, it definitely didn't not work. Either way, the era in which the all-time mark was set could not have been more different from the environment in which Ron Hunt was making his own run at the record. That didn't matter to Ron, though, when he stepped up to the plate against Chicago righty Milt Pappas on September 29th, captured here in one of the few surviving recordings of a Ron Hunt hit by pitch. 
Pour lui, tous les moyens étaient bons pour se rendre sur les buts. Il a même établi un record en se faisant atteindre 50 fois par des lancers en 1971. If you were listening closely to that clip, or if you speak French, one particular word might have stood out to you. Now, all we need is a quick visit to Google Translate and... Oh. Oh. In 1971, Ron Hunt of the Montreal Expos was hit by 50 pitches, obliterating the modern-day record of 31, and at the time, passing Jennings' all-time mark of 49 as well. Let's take another look at those 327 seasons where a batter was hit by at least 15 pitches. Here's Ron Hunt. In second place, you'll find Don Baylor, whose 35 hit by pitches in 1986 would be the highest total for anyone not named Ron Hunt since 1898. Even so, that's a spread of 43% between Hunt's record and the next best season, which is actually incredible. Let me see if I can find a way to explain just how mind-blowing that statistic really is. Nolan Ryan's 5,714 career strikeouts is largely considered to be one of the most untouchable numbers in baseball. For someone to break this record, they would have to strike out 300 batters per season for over 19 seasons, a superhuman achievement. It's also just 17% more than Randy Johnson's 4,875, which would only take a mere 16 300 strikeout seasons to match. Or take Cal Ripken's 2,632 consecutive games played, which passed Lou Gehrig's legendary mark by over 500. Even so, that only comes out to a 24% spread between first and second, a far cry from Hunt's unprecedented dominance. Even Joe DiMaggio's legendary 56-game hitting streak, the prototypical unbreakable record, saw someone come closer to it than to Hunt's 50 hit by pitches, when Pete Rose set the modern-day NL record with 44 in 1978. When it came to taking a beaning, Ron was in a league of his own. 538's Jonah Carey did a deep dive on Ron Hunt's 1971 season back in 2015 and found that among every player who's collected at least 502 plate appearances in a season since 1900, Ron's 50 hit by pitches are 13 standard deviations above the average. For those of you who are math experts, you can pick your jaws up off the floor now. But for those of you who aren't, like me, think about it this way. There's ostensibly nothing in our everyday lives that could ever be anywhere close to 13 standard deviations above the norm. Not a man who's 8 feet tall, or 700 pounds, or blessed with a 200 IQ. When he retired in 1974, Ron Hunt's 243 career hit by pitches were the modern day record, and while they would eventually be eclipsed by Don Baylor and later Craig Biggio, it took Baylor 19 years, and Biggio 20, to accomplish what Ron had done in 12. In those 12 seasons, Hunt finished top 10 in the league in hit by pitches 11 times. The only year he didn't, 1965, he was sidelined for two-thirds of the season with injuries, non-hit-by-pitch related, of course. It was also after Hunt retired that the decision was made to add two hit-by-pitches to Huey Jennings' 1896 total, bringing the new record up to 51. Even so, I think that both you and I know that if Ron had wanted to get those two extra bruises, he probably would have found a way to make it happen. The argument over who should hold the title of MLB Hit-by-Pitch King is one of the most hotly debated subjects among baseball fanatics today. Okay, that's a lie, but it's really interesting to me, and by now I hope it is to you too. But there's just one more number I need to tell you about. This one's worth it, I promise. Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs in 1927, breaking the previous single season mark he himself had set six years earlier, when he hit 59 in 1921. Ruth hit more home runs alone in 1927 than all but three MLB teams had combined. Ron Hunt was hit by a pitch 50 times in 1971, a year when the league average was 34 per team. Excluding the Expos, only the Tigers and the White Sox had more total hit by pitches in 1971 than Hunt did alone. Ron Hunt's 1971 hit by pitch rate of 7.8% was 15 times the league average. That same year, Willie Stargell led Major League Baseball with 48 home runs. If Ron were to have surpassed the league average home run total by a similar margin, he would have set the all-time single season record, beating Ruth's 60 in 1927, Maris's 61 in 1961, even Barry Bonds' current mark of 73, set in 2001. Because for a player to be as good at hitting dingers as Ron Hunt was at getting hit by pitches, they would have had to have hit 175 home runs in a season. So, no, Ron Hunt wasn't the Babe Ruth of getting hit by pitches. He was three.